Everyone always asks for my CO2 presets. So today I'm gonna give you plug and play settings for moderate tanks, maybe high tech tanks, maybe even shrimp tanks. We're gonna keep it simple and we're gonna aim for one pH drop by the lights are on, well by the time lights are on. That's way more reliable than trying to figure out bubbles per second, but I will mention that as well. So make sure you copy all of these settings, pause in those spots, and screenshot them, whatever you need to do, but let's hop on into it. Bubbles per second changes with tubing, it can change with your diffuser, it can even change with your temperature. So the best way to actually test how much CO2 is dissolved in your water is actually your pH. It's the most reliable way to test that aquarium. Now, what you wanna do to get a good basis is check your pH right, not right, after your lights have turned off a couple of hours in the evening, you wanna go through and test your pH. And how do you do that? With a tester. I'll put a link for this one that I got on Amazon. I think it was 20 bucks. It may even be cheaper. This checks your pH, but also guess what? It checks your TDS, which I need for my shrimp tanks. So again, you want about one point, one unit lower. That means great CO2 dissolved in that aquarium. So what do you need? You'll need a cylinder for CO2. You'll need a regulator or a two-part regulator. You'll need a bubble counter. This is just unscrewed right here. So this counts the amount of bubbles CO2 that's entering in. And then you'll need a check valve. This is very important. So make sure you add a check valve into the inline um, tubing for your CO2. And then you'll also need a diffuser, which I have right here. You'll also see a clip coming up of the diffuser running as well. And then you'll also need surface agitation. Now you don't want a ton of surface agitation. So if you have a spray or you have an intake, make sure you're having surface agitation, not too much, of course, because it's going to defeat the CO2. Um, I have a lily pipe here that has an intake that actually creates surface agitation. I turn off my aeration during the day for my CO2 tank so that it's not competing against the CO2 and releasing gas into, well, converting the gas into the air as well. So make sure if you have aeration, you turn off the aeration during your CO2 time and at night you're running that aeration. We're gonna keep it super simple. You wanna turn your CO2 on one hour before your lights turn on and one hour before your lights turn off. That is right when your aquarium plants wake up, you're gonna have one unit drop of pH. That is the optimal time. So for the Churros lights, if you're using these, I have a ramp up session of one hour I have my CO2 hit and drop my pH by one right when my lights turn on to the ramping up stage. So that gives it actually an optimal area of two hours. But if you don't have a ramp up stage, just turn it on one hour before the lights turn on and one hour after. Little keynote here, I have clown killifish and a lot of people ask, hey, they don't jump out. Nope, because my lights ramp on, they don't get a big jolt of light switching. So keynote there. So you want to start conservative and tune by pH. You can relatively start with your bubbles per second and I'll give you those. So for a 10 gallon tank, you're going to be about 0.5 to one bubble per second. And then the scale just goes up for a 20 gallon tank. You're going to go one bubble per second to two bubbles per second for a 30 gallon tank. You're going to go two bubbles per second to three bubbles per second and then so on and so forth so forth as you go up that scale. You want to fine tune, not by bubbles per second, but fine tune by your pH. Again, one unit of pH drop should happen when CO2 is fully dissolved in your aquarium. And again, you wanna do a 24 hour period before you test or do a drastic change again. Well, you're testing every day, but for your pH as you're getting it dialed in, but I meant in terms of like, when you're going through, you want to make sure that that pH is one unit and then 24 hours, you're going to do one change. By the next time you wake up and it's starting to run again, you're going to test that pH again. So again, just follow those steps. 
All right, let's talk about presets. So number one is going to be going through and having your moderate aquarium. So for this one, your moderate aquarium is going to have a one unit drop of pH, and you're going to have that light set to around seven to eight hours. And if you need to, you can change your unit rate of how much CO2 is going into your aquarium to drop that pH. Change it by 10% if it's not dropping a full unit of pH by lights on. You wanna also make sure you have some surface agitation. Again, not a whole lot, but some. You're gonna feed macronutrients. You're gonna have also iron about two to three times a week to supplement nutrients into those plants. All right, so for high tech tanks, you're gonna aim for a pH unit drop of one to 1.2. You're gonna have your lights right around seven hours. And this is all if you have your flow and nutrients dialed in. You can check this by looking at your glass or your plants. Do you have green dust? Then your tank is probably not yet dialed in. So dial that in first. Now for your shrimp tanks. You're either gonna have no CO2 or you're gonna have a light CO2 and you want a pH drop of 0.3 or 0.4. I would go, yeah, that works. And this is only if you have shrimp that don't get hurt by fluctuation in pH. That's why you're going so little in that fluctuation of units. I have shrimp tanks and most of my shrimp tanks don't have CO2. This one does and they're using crystal shrimp and they're not impacted by it but I will say my orange eye shrimp definitely got impacted by it. So just go by those rules. So most CO2 problems are mainly because of flow. You wanna make sure you have some surface agitation like I have for my skimmer, or, and also you have flow through the entire aquarium itself. The best way to do this is a flake test. Just drop a flake at the top of the aquarium. Is it flowing in a circular path if it is, check, you're good to go. So safety check. It is a good idea to get a drop checker if you're first starting out, but you don't necessarily need it. So if your fish are gasping for air, then you definitely have a CO2 issue. Or if you do get a drop checker, which I did when I first started out, if you're in the green area, you're good. If you're in the yellow area, you are bad. And if you're in the blue area, you don't have any CO2 in your aquarium. So it is good if you're starting out, but you can check that by pH or fish gasping. So if that does happen, what you want to do is dial back that CO2 about 10 to 20%, but you don't need to necessarily turn it off. You can essentially just go through and create surface agitation. So if you do have some type of aeration that you can throw in that aquarium, it will actually burn off all that CO2 and you'll be good to go and your fish will be back to normal. So let's talk about some troubleshooting. No purling or you have some white tips, then you should increase your CO2 right around 10% or lower your light around one to two inches. Do you have blackbeard algae or staghorn? Then what you wanna go through and do is either increase your flow or you can also check and turn off your light about 30 to 60 minutes earlier. And then also check your pH and just verify it. Now, what happens if your pH doesn't drop? What you wanna do is test your KH because KH actually stabilizes your pH. If you have a high KH, it will actually decrease the amount of as fast as your pH drops or check for leaks, right? You don't want CO2 leaking into your bedroom or like this, my studio. So just check for leaks. I'd check for leaks first, then test your KH. Let's go with some quick questions. What if your KH is lower, you have active soil? You wanna start right around a unit drop of 0.6 to 0.8, aim for that first. Do you need a drop checker? Definitely don't require it. It's nice to have, it's a nice cross check, but a pH reader is way more optimal. Next one is when should I see purling of my plants? Typically you'll see purling right around the one to three hour mark in between one, two, three hours. You should see purling. That's when your plants are extremely active. 
that's when you should see the purling cycle. Comment below your tank size, your KH, your light, and your photo period, and I'll create you a custom CO2 preset for you right in the comments below. I've also pinned my comments pinned in the comments below my presets, so feel free to check those out. And make sure you check out my lighting video right here for the presets I use with my CO2 tanks. And until next time, I'll see you all on the next tip video.